All right, so we're going to go over the structures of the skull in this video. Um, we're going to start out with the bones and then go through the features of those bones. So this is the frontal bone. And if we just look posterior to the frontal bone, these bones right here are the parietal bones. Now what separates the frontal bone from the parietal bones is a suture called the coronal suture, which is shown here. Okay. Now what separates the two parietal bones is another suture called the sagittal suture, which is shown right here. Now if we go even more posteriorly on the skull, and we look here in the back, this is called the occipital bone, and that's separated from the parietal bones by another suture called the lambdoid suture. So this is the lambdoid suture, which separates the occipital bone from the parietal bones. Now if we look laterally on the skull, we can see another bone here called the temporal bone, because it's kind of out by your temple, and the temporal bone is separated from your parietal bone by the squamous suture, which is this. This is the squamous suture. Okay. Now, if we go over bones of the face, we can see that these are the zygomatic bones. Okay. These are the maxillary bones. These are the nasal bones. This is the vomer. And this is the lacrimal bone. And these are the ones we can see on the face. So if we look, uh, oh, by the way, this one's the mandible down here. This is the mandible. Now, if we go on the inferior view of the skull, we can see a lot more here. We can see the occipital bone again. We can see the temporal bone again on either side. We can see the sphenoid bone here, which forms these little feet. We have the palatine bone here, two of them, and the maxilla just anterior to that. Now, um, if we go over some of the structures of these bones, um, we're going to go through some more kind of finer detail here. So let's first start with the occipital bone. So let's go back to this view. So with the occipital bone over here, the inferior view of the skull, we can see the occipital condyles. Each one of these little bumps is the occipital condyle. And this serves as the attachment point for the first cervical vertebra, which is called atlas. So atlas, or the first cervical vertebrae, would attach here at the occipital condyles. Now this large hole right here is called foramen magnum, which literally translates into big hole. And so the occipital condyles here just sit lateral to the foramen magnum. Now with the temporal bone we talked about as being on the lateral view of the skull, we can see some other structures, like the external acoustic meatus, which is this ear hole here but it's called the external acoustic meatus. What's nearby is called the mastoid process. So this is the mastoid process. Uh, we also have another structure called the mandibular fossa. And the reason why it's called this is that the mandible fits right in where that fossa is. Right here is the mandibular fossa. So if I remove the mandible, this here is the mandibular fossa, which is where the mandible would articulate or connect with the skull. So you can see that the mandible fits right in, and that's seen the fit right there in the mandibular fossa. Now, um, <clears throat> some other structures we can see on the skull would be another one called carotid canal. So this is carotid canal right here. So carotid canal is a space or a foramen for the carotid artery to go up to the brain. Okay. Um, now we can see some other structures nearby, like the jugular foramen. So this larger hole nearby, that one's called the jugular foramen. So the jugular foramen is, a, is another foramen or hole where the jugular vein exits the skull and brings venous blood back towards your heart. <clears throat> now, uh, another structure we can see in the temporal bone is inside the skull. So if we take the skull cap off and look inside the skull, um, this is still the temporal bone here, just a different view of it, okay? Now, from the inner view of, this, of the temporal bone, this hole here is called the internal acoustic meatus, which is where the nerves that, from your middle ear, go to your brain, okay? Um, and so those, those are structures of the temporal bone. Now for the sphenoid, we're going to find the sphenoid bone in this view of the skull right around here. This is all the sphenoid bone here in the skull, okay? Now uh, this is the cella tersica of the sphenoid bone. Okay, and which means Turkish saddle, but this is basically where the pituitary gland would sit. Now nearby we're going to have the lesser wings of the sphenoid here, and the greater wings of the sphenoid would be these larger 
specific ones out here. So lesser wings, the greater wings, okay? We also have um, some other foramina or holes. So for instance, this pipe cleaner here is going through the optic canal, which is where the optic nerves would go through uh, to meet the eyes. Something else we have nearby is the superior orbital fissure right here, which is another place for nerves to go through and get to the eye, okay? Um, now, if we look at the sphenoid bone by itself, it looks a lot different. So here's a sphenoid bone that we saw inside the skull, but this is actually one by itself now. These are the lesser wings of the sphenoid on the free sphenoid bone. This is the cella tersica of the sphenoid bone. These are the greater wings out here. And we're gonna see that optic canal again, as well as the superior orbital fissure. Now, um, for the ethmoid bone, and the ethmoid bone sits just anterior to the sphenoid bone, and so this is the ethmoid bone, and so there's some different structures here, like this one here is called Christogala. So Christogala is like uh, this little crest right here, and just lateral to Christogala we have the cribriform plate, so this is the cribriform plate, just lateral to Christogala. Now we can also see the ethmoid bone inside the nasal cavity, so if we look in here, this is the ethmoid bone again, but from inside the nasal cavity, okay? Now we can see the middle nasal concha is this bump right there. That's the middle nasal concha. And just medial to the middle nasal concha, this little ridge of bone right there is called the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, okay? Now, what we're seeing here next is the ethmoid bone by itself, okay? So it would sit in the skull, just between the eyes and around the frontal bones here. This is gonna be the superior view of the ethmoid bone as seen from inside the skull. So this part of the ethmoid would match up to this part of the ethmoid inside the skull. Which means that this is Christogale on this little free ethmoid bone here, just as this is Christogale inside the skull. This is the cribriform plate on the ethmoid on the free one here, just as what you saw on here, this is the cribriform plate inside the skull. Now, if we, if we rotate the ethmoid bone and look at the inferior view, this is the view that you would see inside the nasal cavity, like we saw in there. Now, um, this here is called the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, which forms the superior part of your nasal septum. Now, just lateral to the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid, these here are the middle nasal concha, again, just as that bump in there was the middle nasal concha as we saw before. Um, now on the free ethmoid, this is where we can see the superior nasal concha, which is right here. So this is the superior nasal concha, just nearby the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid, also by the middle nasal concha of the ethmoid bone. But they're all structures here of the free ethmoid bone. Now, um, we're gonna go over next some, some structures of the facial bones. And so we're going to first start with the maxilla, which was this bone right here. Now, on the maxilla, we had um, the dental alveoli, which are all these little ridges, which are associated with the teeth. Um, and in fact, it's also where the tooth fits into the socket, too. So we'll call those the dental alveoli, all these little bumps on the maxilla that are associated with the tooth. Okay. Now. Um, Another structure of the maxilla we can see here in the orbit is called the inferior orbital fissure, which is what this pipe cleaner is sticking through here. That's inferior orbital fissure of the maxilla. Now, um, we talked about earlier how this was the lacrimal bone inside of the orbit, so that the, this, this indentation or fossa is the lacrimal fossa of the lacrimal bone. Now, um, on the mandible, if we take this off, we can see some structures here in the mandible. Now, um, uh, like the maxilla, the mandible also has dental alveoli, all these little bumps, okay? But we're also gonna have our condylar process of the mandible, which is right here. Now the condylar process of the mandible is what articulates or connects with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone, and it's the condylar process of the mandible with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone that makes up your temporomandibular joint. That's all. And this is the inferior nasal concha.